Hey, what's going on, my lovely little nomads, party people, and strangers everywhere? And today we're doing a after hours review of Civil War, aka Captain America Civil War. This is by far one of the movies I said I wouldn't talk about in February. However, I said I would change my mind if it changed my opinion from what I have seen in the comics to what is on the big screen. And also, you guys may have noticed that I had promised not to talk about Batman v Superman. And technically, I've kept my word. I didn't talk about it. I expressed my feelings towards it, which are still the fucking same. I want my fucking money back, Zack fucking Snyder. There, I've added two extra words. What can I say about C Captain America Civil War that I cannot say without spoiling a lot? Because this is going to be a spoiler-free review because it's still relatively fresh. Well, first, I gotta go into backstory about when I saw the film, and that is basically during the premiere weekend, even though I was given some leaked footage during one of the early screenings where I got to see the team up fight between Captain America's team versus Iron Man's team. It kind of gave me a li little bit of some stuff I already could expect because apparently Edward was bored with getting early access tickets from the German release or something. Anywho. What I'm going to be saying, though, for just a spoiler-free perspective, though, is that the movie kind of diverts from where the comic does things. Where, for example, in the comics, we already had the invasion of the of the Skewers and various things involving Miss Marvel, Wasp, and the Avengers being a giant organization still with S.H.I.E.L.D., but also fighting various other things in the mix. However, in the movies, there is the issue. There is the issue of what happened in a grander scale. You see, in the comics, there was this legislation. There's this legislation that passed where it was something involving heroes being registered to work for the government, which was actually just a passerby thing to introduce a law against mutants. However, in the movies, here's the difference. After saving some people in a nation in Africa, which is also tied to another fictional nation within Marvel, which you all could expect is Wakanda, they end up having to sign this thing called the Accords, which is the U.S. government, along with the U.N., trying to establish rules and laws and regulations for the Avengers due to all the actions that they have done over the course of the film franchise, from when they first got together during Captain America Winter Soldier, again, them in the Avengers Age of Ultron, and even during the beginning of the film, all tying into them actually signing off to see whether or not those members of the team will sign and join up with the UN to do things on their level to gain their trust again, which kind of gives way into one of the main focal points of the movie that kind of sets the whole tonal shift of a divide between Tony Stark and Steve Rogers because Steve after the events of Winter Soldier does not trust anyone not even the US government even though his character is based off of doing things for all the people of the world not just the United Way just trying to gain freedom for those while also being true to his creed of being a good soldier while Tony Stark opposite of his own character being selfish and doing things his way is doing things where he's protecting others and thinking of ways to you know be a smarter individual and be a kinder one towards those that he sees as family since he lost his own family which is still haunting him however that's just not where the whole movie's going to be focused on because the plot has to have action with it otherwise you're not going to sell a good comic book film no 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 Instead, we have to have an instance of the Winter Soldier being brought back into the fray because if you guys remember that after credit scene with an Ant-Man, they find him, but the movie's actually set to be a little bit before the, before the whole ending of Ant-Man, which means that in continuity, Ant-Man, the movie, ran in the same tenure as... Captain America Civil War and then led into the events of 
Captain America Civil War happening in more doses. Continuity is a funny thing. So, anywho, I'm not going to bring into a whole lot of thing involving the plot because you guys need to really see the film for itself, but I will say this. It does bring in a brand new set of so many good conflicts going on, along with introducing one of my favorite characters in that throughout the entire Marvel Universe. I kind of fucked up in an earlier video telling you guys about my favorite comic book heroes of all time. I should have been more specific. My favorite comic book heroes within Marvel. One of them happens to be the Black Panther, aka T'Challa, the prince and future, now current, king of Wakanda. Because if you guys know the story of Black Panther, his dad has to die no matter what. So it's not a giant spoiler, it's just comic book history. If you guys don't know that, at least from the original animated series, or from the other animated interpretations of it, or from just people talking your head and heads off about it like I have for the past several years, then it's kind of just something you gotta accept. Black Panther's in the movie, they've already established that throughout various interviews and news reports, but the whole history of him is just blatant. T'Challa was just a regular old prince, his father died from... You guys would just guess that it changes with every continuity, and he becomes Black Panther along with King of Wakanda. We'll focus more on that when the movie for him comes out within the next few years. And it also brings into the whole thing about where the Avengers will stand by the time of Infinity War Wars comes out, because this whole shift brings out so many battle scars for a lot of different characters and a lot of different people, making you wonder whether or not the team will be whole again and have larger numbers, or there will be no Avengers ever again within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Although we all know the Avengers are going to come back together, because... Who the hell are gonna? What the hell are they gonna do? Just allow the the defenders to save all of humanity? They haven't even formed yet. If you guys don't know who the defenders are, within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, from what I've heard throughout all the news reports and interviews, it's Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist, which kind of makes me wonder why they're not Avengers at all, but. Different times for different different things. So what can I actually say about the film without spoiling too much for all of this? Um, I will say this. It made me almost forgive the comic for a lot of things. Almost. Because if Civil War didn't happen, we wouldn't have gotten one more day. And I wouldn't have set fire to... $9,672.84 worth of comics. I'm just saying, if the story that happened throughout that for for good old Peter Parker, your favorite smart, if smart ass that should have been suffocated at birth, did not happen, I would be a happier man. Anywho. So, aside from that, Ironically, this Peter Parker throughout the Marvel Cinematic Universe now is actually pretty decent. Unlike the Peter Parker from the comics that I still want to throttle, and the other ones like Tommy McCryer and Andrew Gar Garfield, aka Too Silly to Be Taken Serious. He's actually a realistic portrayal about what Spider-Man used to be back in the Silver Age. A simple teenager just trying to do things right by his aunt, who surprisingly is played by a hot actress that I would love to... Anywho. And he's just a wise, a wise cracking 17-year-old that is just started being a hero, which is what the hero started out to be before all the bullshit happened to him that made him such a repulsive moron. And that actually made me pretty happy because I was kind of dreading the whole Spider-Man thing because Peter Parker, not Miguel, not Gwen Stacy in her ultimate alternate universe as Spider-Gwen, not Miles Morales, not Spider-Girl, the aborted child of Mar Mary Jane and Peter Parker because one more day happened, making her non-canon. Thanks, Marvel. No, no, no. Peter... Parker. I'm actually saying this out loud. Peter Parker. 
in a certain continuity within Marvel's own franchise became likable to me. After this, I'm going to have to bleach my own mouth out. And after, and after all this, though, what else could I really say except for... But while you guys fight me on that in the comments, I will just point out that although I've said a lot of things involving my hatred of Boy Scout characters, this is the one time I'm actually going to say this. Unlike my feels for Superman, Batman v Superman, this one made me honestly see the viewpoint of Captain America with pride. And like I did in the comics, I saw where he was coming from, but unlike the comics... I did not agree with Cap fully with what his actions were. Because I will not say that the plot ended up really stupid. It just kind of have a whole had a whole lot of whys and what the fucks. But it was still enjoyable. However, Captain America in this film, I will say this for everyone, just did actions that did not come off as smart. I mean, he did things his own way, and it was through pro and through pride of making sure things were done right, but he did them in a way that wasn't. Various information that he was given could have been done a lot faster, making the plot actually a lot smoother and more streamlike, and preventing a whole lot of conflict that he didn't need. He could have done that, but didn't, because he was so far up his own ass. He could have done a lot of things with his friends that would have been a lot more decent and humane, and quite frankly more of an adult but he didn't and it kind of blew up in his face more times than not and he could have solved one of the biggest fights to come out of the film by just saying stuff from the beginning or at least having the filmmakers show how how the development came out but no no we 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 had to have him be stupid and just wait until the worst possible time to reveal that information cap was not smart in this i will just say this cap was not smart he was enjoyable for me and very likable but he was not fucking smart i am sorry captain america fans you all can admit this and the last part i will say throughout this entire review is what the fuck was going on involving Vision and Scarlet Witch along with Rhodey. Their fates throughout this whole film, although tied and tying in very well to what would happen for Aftermath stuff, honestly, guys, we could have done a lot more with the characters before that. I mean, Vision and Scarlet Witch are just so fresh and new, and we don't get a lot of time with Rhodey in, his, in, in various films because we don't have a War Machine movie. We could have had a lot more of attachment and a lot more care and honestly a, a lot more development with these characters if we focused on them before this big film, which felt more like an Avenger movie than a Captain America movie. Hell, it felt more like a Winter Soldier movie due to certain elements than a Captain America movie. And yet, the development that we got from the three characters I'm talking about could have been expanded on more if we gave time to... But that is all I'm saying for a spoiler-free review. If you guys want me to do an in-depth review of the whole film, I will do so. But only if you guys are very vocal with me in the comments. Where I will give you guys my full detail about where the movie was, the synopsis, how it all played out in my mind, how I felt about it, and just being genuine and not all fanboy with you guys about my whole detail. Because I will honestly just say that this whole movie is just... But anyway, yeah. Captain America Civil War. I recommend that you guys see this movie immediately. Do it before anything else. It is so good. Anywho, next time, we're, next time on uh, After Hours Review, we're either going to be doing Alice Through the Looking Glass, X-Men Apocalypse, or, or, stay with me now, or... Marvel's Doctor Strange. I will leave that up to you guys, but for right now, my name has been V. This has been After Hours, where we just cover all things throughout various things involving no clips. I just dropped something, and I will see all of you lovely nomads 
later. I will see all of you strangers in another video, and I'll see all you party people in the future. So be cool, stay stylish, and remember guys, you are incredible. Stay awesome out there. We make them scream murder. Gunshot, put them down.